Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Seppi and in today's video I'm going to be answering all of your questions that you've sent me about medical school and wow there is a lot of questions. When I say all of them it's not true because honestly I'm going to try and answer most of them and the ones that follow a pattern because in half an hour this is how many questions I have received and I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through all of that. So everyone sent in their questions via Instagram um, regarding medical school. If you guys don't know who I am, my name, like I said, is Seppi. I am 24 years old and I just graduated medical school and I'm about to be a junior doctor in a North London hospital. I studied medicine and this is one of the first questions I'm going to be answering. I have had this question so much over the past like two, three years that I've been doing YouTube, I've had this question so much, and it is, what medical school do you go to? I went to St. George's Medical School. Wow, it's so weird to say that in past tense. I can't explain to you how many times I've been asked that question, and obviously I haven't been able to answer it because I did have a stalker like break into my uni that was really really weird um, and I did film a video about that story time if you guys want to see but um, obviously for safety reasons I didn't want to say what medical school I went to but I absolutely love my medical school so I went to St George's it's part of the University of London and it's quite a small university like definitely much smaller than your average uni but I actually had a really nice experience there um, I had like teachers and stuff um, host a meeting with me when I was in about third year um, when like my YouTube like became apparent to them and they were so nice they basically told me like if you need any help with like cyber bullying or stuff like that we'll be there to support you and like you know if you have any questions like come to us and I thought that was really really nice of them in terms of like my medical education I thought they were incredible in terms of giving us clinical experience from first year we were definitely allowed to go onto the wards and we were allowed to like uh, see what it is that we're going to be doing because I feel like if you just do pre-clinical like doing the science bit of it you might lose some motivation so like being let onto the wards even if you're not allowed to do anything and you're just watching or like doing really minor stuff to like help the nurses it really allows you to get a feel for like the kind of job that you're going to have and like it gets you excited for it and I remember oh I remember the first day like I went on a clinical job I was paired with a nurse um, and I really didn't enjoy it, I'll be honest with you. Um, and then the second day I was paired with a doctor and I really, really loved it. So it made me more sure that I picked the right job because a lot of times people ask you, would you rather be a doctor and a nurse because your jobs you know, are in the same kind of field of work but your responsibilities are different and the things you focus on are different. And when I had the second day where I was with a doctor, I remember the first day I went home crying, I was like, I'm not sure this is what I want to do, etc. after being with the nurse. And then the second day when I came back from being with the doctor, I came to my mum and dad and I was like, this is the most incredible job ever. Like, I literally loved it. So, um, yeah, definitely take that, bear that in mind. There's, I've got a few questions here about, like, picking between different roles in the medical field so like that we have jobs like a physician's associate we have jobs like pharmacy um we have jobs like occupational therapy physiotherapy nursing um these are all like radiography these are all really really important important um scientific degrees that are to do with the, the medical field um so it's really important that like you think through like what aspect that you like and getting work experience is really helpful in helping you decide that so i know that a lot of you guys are messaging me like is work experience like really that important and stuff and it's actually most important for you like I said there's some people who do work experience and realize actually this job is not for me or wow I need to do everything in my power to make sure I get this job because I love it like when I was in year eight I had work experience I needed a day of work experience and I was like oh my god like where am I going to find someone I'd left at the last minute and my sister found me work experience with a dentist and I really like loved the dentist like it was one of her friends he was really nice but the job was just not for me like as in I respect what they do, it's incredible, but did I see myself doing that? No. So you've got to do the work experience to see if it's what you can picture yourself doing because trust me, medical school has a lot of you invested into it. It has a lot of like uh, hours and I can't tell you how many times like you will be like sitting there like stressed and like you'll be questioning things but you will 
you will ultimately need this to be your passion to push you through because it will test you. Okay, so I'm gonna start answering a few of your questions um, because otherwise I could just talk about this point blank for hours, so I won't do that, I'll just answer some of your questions. Like I said, there's quite a lot of questions to get through, so I'm gonna try and answer as many as I can. So, first question, how did you stay motivated when you weren't or in times of hardship so when you weren't motivated or in times of hardship so um staying motivated like i said all comes from the passion um if you're really really passionate about something when it gets really tough it will be your passion that will push you through if this is what you want to do when you're sitting there like oh my god like i haven't gone out the house in god knows how many days like i haven't seen any of my friends and socialized in ages i haven't like done this and that and i've just been revising going library coming home going library going home like you know what will get you through is knowing that actually this is what i want to do and doing this is gonna get me to my end goal. Like, if you don't want it bad enough, then you shouldn't be doing it, in my opinion. Like, you need to want it, like really, really want it, and do anything in your power. If you're thinking, hmm, do I really want it? You're probably, if even if you've got through all the loops you have to jump through to become a medical student, you're probably not gonna last it through because you're gonna not be as passionate enough to overcome the hardships of it so staying motivated is just reminding yourself how passionate you are about the job and like thinking back to like what it was why you even started another thing that always keeps you motivated is taking regular like quick breaks so like in the evenings i'm the kind of person where i need to kind of have a pause like i will go to uni all day then i'll go library until late in the evening and then when i get back home if i want to go and chill with my friends for an hour and it's like 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night well not 11 but like 10 o'clock at night i will go and chill for an hour and that will just refresh me or make me feel like i've had a break and that way it will, i'll be motivated to start again the next day like properly and even throughout the day when i'm working if i know that in the evening i'm gonna have an hour's break i'll work harder so that i've earned the hour's break if i don't have a break coming then i'll probably just sit there inefficiently and like just waste my time because i know i'm going to be there all night like studying so yeah i think taking regular breaks is a really good one too so passionate and regular breaks okay i've literally got like two back to back says is it hard finding a work life balance as a medical student another one says how did you balance having fun and medical school so finding the balance is all about like you personally finding your balance so i don't think for me like i couldn't overdo either if i had too much fun then i would come to uni and i wouldn't have any knowledge and i would be panicked like on the wards or when people ask me questions i would feel rubbish in myself like what kind of medical student am i if i have no knowledge but at the same time if i knew absolutely everything off the textbook and was spending no time for myself and relaxing i'd probably at some point break so I think finding the balance was, like I said, knowing that it's important to give yourself regular short breaks to kind of refresh, you know? You know, once every other night, just go out with your friends for an hour or do what you like for an hour. If you're tired, like let's say you've been revising all day and it's nothing's going in, stop. Because if nothing's going in, you sitting there is just gonna tire yourself out more. So finding a balance is all about finding your like altruistic level it might take you a year it might take you a couple years to get it right but med school is five years so don't worry by the before you're halfway you will have found your right balance so for me it was all about doing the things that i'm passionate about in my free time and making the absolute most of my free time so if i got free time i would come and do youtube videos i would go out with my friends and vlog like my time as well which kind of combined my passion of youtube and also using my free time to see my friends etc so try and make the most of your free time and when you're revising try and make the most of that it's all about 24 hours that you have in a day and what you choose to do with them don't let anyone tell you oh um you shouldn't be doing this you should be revising or you shouldn't be revising all the time you need a break you will know what's right for you how many people i'm sure if you guys have been following me for the past three years then i'm sure you will have seen comments down below underneath my like day in the life where the people be like but how are you doing medicine and like actually becoming like a youtuber and going out all the time etc so people will not understand how you do it all but that's fine because 
they're not you, they're not living your life and they won't have accomplished everything you've accomplished. Your accomplishments will speak for itself. You just have to live your life for you, not for anyone else and find what works for you. Not even your mum will know what works for you. Your dad won't know what works for you. So many times my dad will come in my room and like tell me off like, stop now, stop revising, like no more Red Bull, no more, oh my God, the amount of time I would hear, no more Red Bull, no more revising, like take a break now, come downstairs, come let's go eat. Like why are you not coming out to eat with us? They won't know like what your balance is. They won't know how much work you need to put in or how much relaxation time you need. And if you've got the opposite, if you've got parents who you know push you too much, then go to the library, like get away from them so they can't monitor you. So it's all about you finding the right equilibrium for you. Now on the subject of like controlling parents, I obviously have the absolute opposite of controlling parents. My parents could care less what I do and just want me to be happy. But if you do have a parents who are controlling, I know that it actually 99.99% of the time comes from love and them wanting to see you do well and worrying that like, oh, if I leave it to their own accord, like they might mess this up and I know how much they, it means to them even though they don't get it. So remember that in your heart, remember that your parents are just trying to guide you and help you do the best that you can to ultimately live the best life for you. So like, if you feel like that is the scenario, like I said, maybe it'd be a good idea for you to live out in halls and give yourself a bit of freedom um, from your home environment or just going to the library to study and not being at home, that might help with that as well. After finishing six years of med school, how did you apply for F1, F2? So my med school is actually five years in the whole of the UK. Medical school is five years long. You can take an extra year to intercalate if you like, which is basically like getting an extra like science or whatever like degree um, based on the fact that your first two years of preclinical have enough science in it to make up for another degree I don't know if I explained that properly but yeah so it's, it's down to you as your choice my uni had a range of courses that you could apply for and at first when I went into med school I thought I'd really want to do that but then I changed my mind I didn't want to do that so I didn't intercalate there was nothing in the courses that they offered that I wanted to really really do and was really passionate about to dedicate a whole year to it so I just stayed on the five-year course but when you reach your final year of med school your med school will basically help you apply for the whole process of becoming a doctor so we all sit um, a situational judgment test exam which I did in January there is a vlog for it down below um, I will have a whole medical school kind of playlist for you guys to see all the stuff that I do in regards to med school but the SJT basically determines a score for you the score is out of 50 I think 38 is the average if you guys didn't see in my previous video um, I got 43.2 which is well above average I was ecstatic about it and if you want to know how I revised again it's in that vlog but what you get in that in that exam is added to um, what you've got overall in med school like your grades and 50% is your med school grades 50% is this one SJT exam they add it together and you get a score um, then with this score you then apply um, you rank there's deaneries so the whole of the UK is split up into areas which we call deaneries and in each area there is like there could be different cities or it could just be like so for example Scotland the whole of Scotland is one deanery the whole of Northern Ireland is one deanery but London is split into three deaneries so we've got like um, North I think it's North Central and East North West and South Thames which goes all the way down to even Kent um, so it's like the deaneries are all different and you basically have to rank all of these deaneries once you've ranked the deaneries then you get accepted into one deanery and in that deanery you then have to rank all of the jobs um and then so i got my deanery and then i had to rank 300 and 27 or 328 jobs um, and they are like from all of the hospitals that are in that area so you could either rank it based on like what jobs they have to offer um, or you can rank it on what hospital it's at and like kind of work it out for yourself like that but yeah your med school will walk you through all of that and it's all done on a database called Oriel a lot of questions are asking how did you revise so how did I revise so revision is like a big one I think it's very very personal to you so what works for me might not work for you what worked for my friend um who also passed might not work for me what worked for my friend who also passed might not work for me and vice versa etc so 
it's very very personal i am the kind of person who has to make her own notes i can't revise off of other people's notes and i can't just read a textbook and expect it to go in my brain so i use like reliable resources like um the bmj best practice i use the oxford handbooks and i use lecture notes etc um or notes from our uh, teachers at university and then i will create my own notes based on each um, specialty and the way I make notes is I make a lot of spider diagrams I just write down the most important points about each uh, topic um, so for example in obstetrics there might be postpartum hemorrhage as a topic or there might be um, meconium stained liquor and as one topic etc so you write down each topic um, and then you make your own notes on it um, in spider diagram form just bullet point important stuff etc and then once I have read through them so I'll make the notes then I'll read through them and then I will do questions on them so I used a website called passmedicine.com I'm not sponsored by them or anything I wish um, but it's actually not that expensive it, I think it's like 20 pounds for six months or something like that it's it's not it's not a lot of money but obviously you need to keep subscribing um, and they have like 5,000 questions on there and it's divided each by each specialty so I would revise like that make all my notes on a specialty revise all of them so like read through all of them and then I do all the questions on that specialty then I'll move on to the next one. So that's how I revised. For a lot of you who are asking how I revised for GCSEs and A-levels, um, I didn't make any notes for GCSEs and A-levels from what I remember. I would basically do a lot of past papers. So GCSEs and A-levels, we had the notes that we'd make in class and if I needed them, then I would look back over them. But for that, I would basically um, use the textbook and revise from there and then I would um, do all of the past papers. So I would do all of them in one go because I would pick up the pattern so I wouldn't do like one maths today and um, next week do another maths and next week do another maths because that doesn't make sense like for me like I need to spot the patterns that they're asking questions it's all about with past papers it's all about pattern recognition um, so that's what I, I do I do a lot of pattern spotting through past papers so I would do like let's say all of the biology paper ones um, I would do like one every single day um, and I would do like one chemistry every single day and one physics every single day and then once I'd done all of the paper ones I would make sure I mark each one after I've done it so I would do pa like one paper on Monday and mark it one paper on Tuesday and mark it one paper on Wednesday mark it etc um, because when you mark it you learn your mistakes and you don't make it for the next one so I remember on the first day when I would do it like on the Monday let's say I did a past paper I would get like 50 out of 100 by the last day that I'm doing the paper I would be hitting easily like 80s um, out of 100 and like if I would get something wrong I would literally be frustrated at myself so past papers are definitely the ways to revise for GCSEs and A-levels and try and do them all like in, in one go. So like do all of the paper ones for biology, etc. all of the chemistries. I don't mean in one day, but I mean like don't leave a pause between doing them. Try and keep doing some every single day. How much did you score in the BMAT? I didn't do BMAT, I did UK CAT and I honestly can't lie to you, it was like nearly six years ago I can't remember what I scored I think I got like just above average okay next question as a current medical student I want to ask what was the most difficult year of studies um, I found my preclinical years most difficult so for those of you guys who don't know medicine is kind of split up into preclinical and clinical years so your preclinical years at St George's were first and second year and then clinical years was third year onwards so preclinical you you don't really spend any time in in the hospital you get like I said at the start of the video like shadowing time where like you'll spend like a week shadowing someone um, but most of the time you're in lecture theatres um, or you're learning about like how to examine the heart how to examine the lungs etc um, it's a lot of theory work and then clinical years is when you start being let loose onto the wards um, and you are never ever in a lecture theatre from fourth year onwards like you're never like pretty much not taught like you in fourth year we had like a lecture block before each specialty that was like one week um but for the majority of it it's just learning in practice so i found the years where we were just in lecture theatres the most difficult because i am really good with when i see something in real life and i see how the situation is handled there's no way that i'll forget that because like it just sticks with me like it's it's like a 
like a movie scene it stays in my head so like i will remember so much from what i've learned um on in terms of like clinical experience versus like learning it from a textbook which is the preclinical stuff and you can't not do the preclinical stuff so you know it has to be done but it was just harder for me because i like i said i love the clinical aspect of of medicine so much more than like sitting down and researching the science behind it which is again like i said still important but it's not my favorite part as a long answer sorry the hardest year i would say was probably second year someone said is medical school really science-based like a levels or is it different and how so Med school, like I said, the first two years where you're just doing lectures is very much heavily science based. But the science is completely different to like A level stuff. It's really related to like the human body and it's it's almost like where everything starts from. I would be able to know, for example, how someone is having a seizure if I don't understand how the electrical activities in the brain and in the whole body works and how they are fired and how it works normally. If I don't know how it works normally, how am I gonna know how someone's having a seizure? Once you've figured out how it works normally, you then learn how it can go wrong, all the abnormalities. Once you've learned all the ways that it can go wrong, you then learn what we can do to fix it so it can go right. And that is our management. So like our medications, our treatments, our physiotherapy, etc. And we also need to know the gap in between of where it's gone wrong and knowing what to do, which is our investigations. So we need to know how it's gone wrong. So we can either do find out how it's gone wrong with scans etc or with blood tests so again you need to know what all those investigations are and how each one of those works so in the most basic way possible that's pretty much how medicine works so the first couple years you're figuring out how the body works normally and then in the end of second year in the third year they start teaching you you know all the ways it can go wrong and how you can figure out how it goes wrong and then in third year you figure out how the medications and how what we can do intervention wise to make it go right and of course a lot of diseases that we still don't have a cure for etc so that was like the most broad way that i can describe it but that's pretty much how medical education is based it's nothing like a levels and it is one of the most incredible feelings in the world to study it guys because once you have that knowledge you're just like wow I can't believe I know how this works. And it's not just for this, I know how, like I don't know just how strokes work. I don't know just how epilepsy works, but I know how um, someone who's having a sickle cell crisis could then go on to have a heart attack or uh, etc. You know, like you can, you the broad range of knowledge you'll have, like I'll know that the rash that this person is having is because they took that medication or the bruising they've got is because it's possible they've got this gene that's gone wrong and blah blah blah. Like the knowledge you'll have will just amaze you. You'll amaze yourself of what cap how capable your mind is of taking up so much knowledge and you're just i don't know how to explain it but that's the th feeling of like the thrilling feeling of like medicine where you're just like oh my god i have this much knowledge and yeah you'll just you'll sh amaze yourself i don't know i hope i hope i'm inspiring you guys but that's how i feel a lot of the time like some of my friends will ask me questions and like they're just like how do you know this and it's i'll just be there like Sometimes I even know the answers to things and I don't even know how I know it. It's because you learn so much that like sometimes it gets to a point where you just know it. You don't even know how you learnt it, you just know it. Another studying question, someone said, what tips do you recommend for studying? So for studying, I think that it's important to fine tune it to yourself. I personally am not the kind of person who can study like from the start of the year and like um work from the beginning of the year all the way to like the end like the same number of hours a day simply because the things i studied at the start of the year i won't be remembering at the end of the year and towards the end of the year i will be wanting to work a lot more in order to feel like i'm ready for the exams and i can't just keep it at my same level of like three hours a day or whatever so i like to tend to work more in my exam season and by season i mean like the two to three months leading up to the exam. This is only for medical school. Obviously for GCSEs and A-levels, you're gonna to need to work for that whole year, which is what I did. So for medical school, I work in the exam season. For GCSEs and A-levels, I work for the whole year. So you have to, first of all, know when to start studying, when it feels right for you, if you're the type of person who wants to study all year, or if you wanna start studying in exam season. And then once you get into exam season, like you have to fully dedicate yourself and you have to, 
make sure that you know you have a plan but when i say plan i don't mean like a rigid like nine to ten i'm gonna do this ten to eleven i'm gonna do this i mean more like i'm gonna make notes on this topic today and then i'm going to tomorrow revise those notes and then the day after i'm gonna do all the questions and the day after that i'm gonna do all the questions again and make sure that in that time that you're scheduling you schedule yourself the time off that you need if you need an hour off in the evening to go out with your friends a couple hours to go out with your friends and relax make sure you put that in there regular breaks is what's going to get you through this too many breaks is not good but regular breaks is important so that's my advice for studying another question i got that i read as well was do you study more at home or in the library um throughout gcse and a levels i only studied at home um and then in medical school I can only study in the library so um, obviously I wasn't able to study in the library uh, towards the right at the end when we had the library closed down because of quarantine but like in general I do study more at the library because I see like my friends around me and with medicine because it's quite complex there'll be a lot of questions that like you won't be able to answer find the answers to just from straight up googling it so it's good to have friends there that you can ask them questions like relevant stuff or if you want to take like a break together you can take a break together if you want to sit around each other to be motivated you can do that you can sit together in huddles and practice questions or another important thing about med school is we have exams called OSCEs which are practical exams they are 50% of your grade for the final year so half of it comes from written exams and half of it comes from your practical OSCEs like for example someone will come in and be like oh I've got chest pain and you have to show that you know how to ask them the right questions and how to examine them and what investigations you would do etc that's all examined with you usually an actor and uh, an examiner in, in the room and you have about 10 to 14 stations according to what year of med school you're in so to practice for that you need to kind of practice with your peers because you can't really like sit alone and practice like hey how are you today oh I've got chest pain oh where does it hurt you know you can't do that so you have to do it with your friends and um, that's why it's really important to like study in the library or at uni because you can do that there someone said what's the junior doctor work hours and pay in London love ya so I literally have <laughs> finished med school this week. I haven't started work yet. I have never looked into the pay of a junior doctor. I've heard figures being thrown around, but I can answer these questions once I start work. So have your eyes peeled for some more junior doctor videos. Okay, so I've got a question saying, is it possible to get into med school without the best GCSEs? So I don't know what the best GCSEs are. If you guys want some ballpark ranges, I have friends who got into med school with about five A stars and five A's. I don't think I've met people with less than five A stars. I'm trying to think. Um, a lot of the times though, my friends who've got like weaker GCSEs and A-levels, they end up doing biomedical science, um, which is a degree that um, a lot of people do, which is three years long, and then they apply for postgraduate medicine. So by showing that they've got like a 2-1 or above, um, that kind of makes up for lower grade GCSEs. So I think definitely talk to like your um, advisor at like your school or call up the universities or email them and a lot of them will like give you a lot of advice about like what grades that they usually like accept, including GCSE grades, A-level grades, UK CAT or BMAT grades, etc. So ask them about it, don't feel shy to email, there's always a contact email for admissions there and unis always tend to be really nice to like the people who want to come. Or you can go to an open day and you can ask. Um, if you guys want to know about me, I think I've said this a million times in previous videos, I got 9 A stars and 2 A's at GCSEs, I know that they're numbered now so I don't know what that would translate in numbers and in A levels I got 4 A's and a B. So I did five A-levels, you don't need five, you only need three. Next question, did you have an income next to uni? So I did actually have an income next to uni. For my first two and a half years of uni, I worked as a tutor um, and that was really, really good. Like you can make money starting from 25 to 50 pounds an hour. Um, the cheaper price rates would be depending on how loyal your customer is and also how many hours they want you a week. I made really, really, really good money from that. Like, honestly, I think I was living quite a luxury lifestyle with the amount of money that I was making. I could go out with my friends. I could afford to, like, do a lot of stuff that... Um, students couldn't really afford to do because of how much I was earning. Um, and I think that, again, goes to show how incredible it is to have a an education where you can share your knowledge and how powerful that knowledge is that it was earning me that much money and then I 
stopped doing that because med school got a bit more heavier for me and my parents were kind of like you don't have to do it if you don't want to like if you just want to focus on like uni like just go ahead and do that and then I also did YouTube videos and I did Instagram fashion blogging which also is a source of income which I really really enjoy and I didn't actually start off being a source of income it just started off because I wanted to film videos um so yeah I didn't start that because of that at all um it just turned into that way so um yeah someone says how did you take notes during lectures so basically in lectures i would before this is before panopto arrived i don't know if your unis have panopto but it's basically like the screen recording with the voice recording at the same time and the slides move as the person moves there etc but when i first was in preclinical years we only had powerpoint slides and someone talking and then we'd get the recording separate it was very very old school um but i actually preferred it that way because the powerpoint presentations underneath it had a note section and um under each slide I would basically write down everything that um, the tutor said that's not on the slide so anything that I thought was important that they've said that's not on the slide or if it explains the slide a lot more easier I'd write that down then after the lecture I would go and print off that whole lecture the PowerPoint and I would print it in the format of the three slides a page because it had notes next to it so once I printed it off uh, the notes that I'd written on my laptop I would then transfer onto these PowerPoint um, printouts um, and that way that was me kind of revising it by like writing it out again and that was my kind of notes and revision so I found that really easy obviously like I said after that we didn't really have many lectures so that only worked for my first and second year okay I'm gonna answer the last question now there is a lot of questions I'm gonna try and answer some today on my Instagram sorry if you don't catch it um, but if there's a lot more questions that you guys have that I haven't answered then I will do a part two just let me know in the comments but the last question is when did you know you wanted to become a doctor and any advice for young aspiring doctors. So I knew I wanted to become a doctor about a day after I got my GCSE results. So I got my GCSE results and I remember I'd got a lot better than I had been predicted. My school actually predicted me like five or six A stars um, and like A's and B's and um, that was them kind of acting like they'd pushed the boat out by giving me really good predicted grades. So yeah, so I kind of didn't realise kind of how smart I was even though growing up everyone would always, like my whole family would always tell me, you're so smart, you're so smart. But I didn't realise how smart I was until I got my results. Um, and then I, when I did get my results I kind of sat down and thought, hey, like what do you want to do? And at that point I really loved like history and English literature. I literally got 100% in those exams in my GCSEs. But I also loved science. Like science for me was like logic there's an answer to it like you know you're always obviously like there's a lot of theories but what I meant was like there, there was always an answer to it it wasn't like philosophy where you're thinking like there's loads of possible answers and you'll never know which one's right so that's why I was like I want a scientific degree and I really wanted to do something that I felt would help people like my nature and my character is just like I feel like if you meet me in real life I always try and help people where I can and like I really really care about people and like I'm quite nurturing and so that's why I thought the best thing that would suit me would be to become a doctor and that's how I decided it and I remember I told my parents we were in the car on the way to my auntie's house and I was like guys guys like it was just me my mum and dad and I was like guys and they were like yeah I was like I know what I want to do and they're like what do you want to do and I was like I want to be a doctor and they were like oh like that's amazing and it was really weird for them because they they'd never ever suggested it to me my dad always told me he thought I'd go Oxford and study history um and my mum always thought I'd be a dentist um but I didn't ever like dentistry at all I always used to tell her like I don't like dentistry my sister Sol's a dentist um so maybe that's why she thought I'd be a dentist too but yeah I didn't like dentistry so I was like yeah I'm gonna be a doctor and they're like wow like that's so amazing and they were just really really supportive and it just once I made that decision I stuck to it I knew it was what I wanted I knew it was what suited me and I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else and I still to this day can't imagine myself doing anything else but but that doesn't mean it's the only thing that I'm gonna do with myself in my life so like my main focus and my main career is obviously always gonna be being a doctor but that doesn't mean that I can't be on here on YouTube and being a youtuber or being on Instagram and being an influencer and I even love fashion and one day I'd love to do some writing towards fashion and being like a fashion journalist there's a lot of things you can do with with the amount of time you're given in a day so don't put yourself in a box and think just because I'm a doctor I'm gonna 
that's all I can do. Or just because I'm a research analyst, that's it. Like, don't put yourself in a box. Don't limit yourself. That's my advice to aspiring doctors is make sure you want it. Make sure it's your main focus and it's all you've ever wanted to achieve. But don't let that stop you from living your whole life and living out all of your dreams, you know? There's not just one, you don't have to have just one dream. No one's gonna tell you off for wanting to wanting more for yourself. And like, it doesn't mean you're spreading yourself thin. Don't believe any of that. That's what, I had a lot of people on YouTube comments telling me that. And where are they now? I don't know. So yeah, don't, what I'm trying to say is do what you want to do, do what makes you happy and don't limit yourself. You guys are, like I'm telling you, you're capable of anything you want, but you have to put the work in. You can't just sit there and be like, oh, I want to be a doctor, but I don't know if I'm bothered to revise for it. Like, yeah, no, like I want to be a doctor. I don't care if I don't get to sit down for like six hours a day and watch Netflix and instead I have to revise because I'm gonna get to where I want to get to. Or I want to be a pilot, yeah? And I have to take these piloting classes, etc. So do what it is you need to do. Girls and boys, you, you can do it. I'm telling you, it's very achievable. Anything you put your mind to is achievable. So don't limit yourself. Don't question your talents. Don't question your worth. Just push through. It's in this 21st century, it's so easy to be lazy, you know, just sitting down watching shows all day and like, you know, buying stuff and etc. Like just being a consumer and doing nothing. It's very easy. The temptation is there. But don't give in to temptation and try and make the most of yourself and fulfill all of your dreams. And if you get tired and need a break, that's not the same as giving up or not trying your best. Don't confuse that. Okay, I'm trying too much. This video is way, way, way too long, but I hope that this was helpful for you guys. If it was, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me down below. Let me know if there was any advice that you still want me to give. Let me know if there was any advice that really stuck out to you. Just chat to me in the comments. I always love talking to you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. It's also linked down below, Persian Bunny. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.